So to get this started, like I said, I'm going to select two trees that are about 10 feet apart. I could establish a full ridge line and put this over, but you know, as far as a conservation of cordage thing, I find it's easier that if I can, if I have the ability like I do now to use two trees, I can save my cordage for other tasks. If you look, I've already tied the hood of the poncho off. What I did was twist this up real tight, gooseneck it over, and then tie it off with the uh, drawstrings that come with it. And what that does is that takes that, that hood and closes it up so that I can use this more like a tent. And what I've got is a couple of figure nine carabiners. Uh, and these are pretty great. They're made by Night Eyes. Uh, and what I've done is I've simply put a girth hitch on those so that then I can go and tie these off to the tree. I'm gonna pick a spot for my shelter so that my shelter ends up being no higher than waist high because I don't wanna make this so high that I start to lose heat. All I need to be able to do inside this shelter is lay down. All I have to do is come up and tie this off. Normally I'll wrap it around, come back underneath and I'll tie it off with a square knot. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. If I don't have this carabiner on, I could tie this direct to the tree. But because I've got this on, I can put it down in the tree and lock it down. And then I'm already secure on that side. So it just makes setting up the shelter that much quicker. I can throw a security knot in there to keep it from moving. Basically just putting a half hitch in here with a quick release and that keeps it nice and tight. And then as this cordage starts to stretch, what I can do is, you know, come up, retighten it and lock it down again. This method takes a lot less cordage than running a full ridge line. And the poncho is not going to slide back and forth on top of that ridge line. This makes it more secure. So now all I have to do is stake out the corners. So I'm going to tie these out real quick. And you can use whatever anchor knot you want. But I like to tie these out since I'm tying directly to a stake. I'll use a round turn and two half hitches. Now over here I've actually got a green sapling that I can use for a tie off. So that allows me to save my stake for something else if I need it. So I'll just tie off directly to that with a round turn and two half hitches. Same thing over here. Got a little sapling I can use instead of using a stake. Now I'll tie off the center so I can expand it out. That'll give me more room on the inside. And I've still got two stakes left over. As you can see, what I'm left with is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for waist high or smaller. The openings are facing away from the, the, the prevalent wind in the area. And this lower profile that's closer to the ground will allow me to trap more body heat and it'll stay warmer overall inside the shelter. As you can see, I've got kind of this dip coming down. What I can do to give myself some more room in there, I can construct a simple A-frame and tie that up. Athena, where are you trying to go with that pole? I just cut that pole. Where are you going with it? Oh, you turned your back on me. Athena, I'm taking the pole. Not look at me. Athena, I'm taking the pole. Athena, I'm taking the pole. All right, well, it's still happening. I've got my two poles that I'm going to use to make that A-frame in the center to hold the, the middle up. What I want to do is lash these together, and I could certainly use, you know, a traditional lash. But as far as a conservation of cordage kind of thing, I want to use as little as possible, and, and a traditional lashing takes a lot of cordage. So what I can do is, is I can make a bite and then tie an overhand in the end. That'll give me a fixed loop that I can double over to make two fixed loops. And I can slide those right over the end. I'll slide those up to about uh, eight inches or so. And I've already kind of established the beginning of my lashing. And then what I can do to make it tight 
is with those loops up here to the top, all I have to do is spin one of these poles until it tightens up. You gotta be careful not to put so much tension on it that it breaks. But there, I've established my A-frame with very little time and with very little cordage. So with this A-frame, what I wanna do is set it over the middle and then stake it down in. Now I've given myself some structure. I've given myself an A-frame that I can tie the hood up to. Now, one of the things that I like to do whenever I make a shelter is I want to kind of look at the shelter and figure out which way the rain is going to run off if it happens to rain. And I want to just establish a rain catch that I can reach from the inside the shelter. And that way, if I'm stuck in there for a while but I still need to hydrate, I can harvest fresh rainwater and drink it as I'm, as I'm holed up in this hooch waiting for the rain to pass so I can get out and do other priorities. I think what the water is going to do as it hits this is this ridge is going to catch some of it and it's going to come down through here and it's going to drop right here. If it starts raining and I happen to see that it's fallen differently than I planned, I can just move this. I'm just going to dig a little spot out. That way I can set my Nalgene bottle in there. and hopefully catch the rain as it drops down on my shelter. And there you have it. This is the A-frame poncho shelter, uh, or what we call in the military, the poncho hooch.